That's that emotional sense of, uh, I just lost something. Now, the interesting thing is you're heartbroken because you had something to lose. And so I want people that are going through pain to go, listen, it's okay if we end up somewhere where we want to be, right? right. Can, can, we, can we handle that if, if, if I can tell you that down the road something good's going to happen? Sure. This is Recovery TV Live, and uh, we're glad to be back. Super excited about our guest today, um, Donnie Van Curen. Without further ado, let me go ahead and uh, introduce Donnie. Donnie, thanks for yeah for being here today. Looking forward I to it. Appreciate it. it yeah. Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, this is uh, the day after Valentine's Day. Yeah, this is this actually can be some of the roughest times of the year. Um, I've had several people in my office today that. If they're single, uh, they're reminded that they're single. Yeah. Uh, if they've been divorced, they're reminding themselves that they weren't they aren't with someone right now. Mm -hmm. um, even if they have really tough marriages and tough relationships, even if they're not married, uh, this is a time to reflect and remind yourself that you don't have a good relationship. So, right. it is a uh, a lot of people remind themselves they have somebody, and mm -hmm. and that can be a good thing. But there's probably as many on the other side, right. if not more, that this is not a really good time of the year. Mm -hmm. Right. Not unlike yeah. the other holidays where, you know, Christmas, there's a lot of grief, yeah. Yeah. a lot of reminder of, hey, I don't want to do Christmas. I remember losing my mom or dad or something. Right. Sure. So I can imagine a lot of people are like, they're, just, they're, they're suffering or just finishing up Christmas. Like, oh, I do Valentine's Day now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a yeah. dread. Yeah. It, can, it can be a dread. And, yeah. and I've seen a few of those just this week that uh, this is just a tough week. Mm -hmm. can, their depression's up, right. their anxiety's up. And mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with this week. Yeah. For those that experience a broken heart, or maybe that's an experience they just had, uh, does that necessarily mean the relationship's over? I don't believe it does, and, and I've had situations where it, it isn't over. I mean, broken heart is emotions. It's not necessarily uh, mm -hmm. conducive to the outcome. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we can be hurt by someone, but that doesn't mean it can't come back around mm -hmm. and, and become maybe even better at times. Right. And so, no, I don't believe it's the end of a relationship. I don't think it is uh, because we're hurting right now doesn't mean there's not reconciliation or the ability to grow in the relationship and have um, a renewed feeling of safety, mm -hmm. right. uh, security, and strength. So, no, I, I don't think it's the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's right. just a, a really tough spot. Yeah, um, so. You know, I, I parallel broken hearts to um, to loss mm -hmm. um, because I, I do grief counseling. So someone will come in and, and they've lost a husband or, or recently a son. And that broken heartedness of losing someone has a lot of parallels to the same feelings of someone whose husband just left them or whose, whose wife mm -hmm. left them or girlfriend, mm -hmm. et cetera. And so that's that emotional sense of uh, I just lost something. Now, the interesting thing is you're heartbroken because you had something to lose. Right. Yeah. Okay, so right. I, I've lost something. I'm grieving the loss of something. Now, right. what is that? Well, I'm grieving the loss of someone that I got to talk to in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm grieving someone that I got to share a Valentine's with. Mm -hmm. So really that loss is I've lost something that I once had. You, you wouldn't have a broken heart if you never had anything right. or had a heart to break is, mm -hmm. is, is right. a way to say it. But I do think right. it's that emotional upheaval of someone taking something. I love what, uh, I don't remember who stated it, it's not mine, and they said the hurt of losing someone, that grief, mm -hmm. is love with nowhere to go. Uh -huh. right. Let's just take that from a broken heart. Yeah. I have all these feelings and love, I have nowhere to put it. Right. And that's, that's a, probably a pretty good um, understanding or explanation of pain. They're experiencing an immense amount of feeling that, feelings that generally would be distributed into the relationship, relationship yeah, right? yeah so now we're not put this yeah exactly right. where's that energy going yeah and then in our, our society today that. we have so much comparison right so now i'm going and by the way i'm not like everybody else mm -hmm. which is a whole nother emotional mm -hmm. upheaval for us because mm -hmm. i i don't fit in i'm behind I, i'm not sharing with that person that person mm -hmm. now right. of course we're basing that on social media and we don't necessarily put out our bad day right, right. Right. So now I'm in addition to the hurt, I also don't measure up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also don't belong to the I'm club yeah. of people mm -hmm. that are enjoying the relationship. Right. right. And Valentine's mm -hmm. Day is the perfect example because it is the mirror. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. It yeah. puts you up against everybody and you're comparing. It's like right. a really highly magnified mirror and you're comparing mm -hmm. it. Right. Your relationship or where mm -hmm. you are to everybody else around. Right. And if we don't have a sense of who we are, 
which in today's world, especially adolescents, and you know, I don't have, I don't know who I am, so I am who you tell me I am. Right. And if you tell me I don't measure up, whether you said it or I just mm -hmm. in, yeah. in taking that information, sure. well, this just further exasperates that. Mm -hmm. um, and so even really solid people that are in mentally and emotionally in a good place, it's really hard to not go, well, but am I really? To not be affected. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So one thing, you know, in our practice that we're working with a lot of people that have uh, broken hearts that the, but not a broken up relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could potentially could go that way, right? Yeah. But, mm -hmm. I'd say most, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, I um, mean, of course, I'm, I'm referencing Carrie because she works with spouses of mm -hmm. addicts or sex oh, yeah. addicts. Oh, yeah. And um, also um, works with the spouses, uh, the, um, the injured partner, and when there's betrayal trauma. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're very, you're very, she's very familiar with, with this concept. I'd, I'd, it'd be I want to hear your take on it, um, of uh, the kind of confusion, the ambiguity that goes, well, I have a broken heart. But we're not splitting up. Mm -hmm. It's and that's tough. And I've had that situation yeah. where people, um, I don't know, stuck, trapped in jail. Uh, they just feel that sense of okay, it's never going to feel better, and and I'm I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to get a divorce, or I don't want to leave this person. I love them, or kids, or whatever the involvement is, mm -hmm. and I don't feel like I can go anywhere. And and that's a tough place because one, we don't think it's going to get any better. Mm -hmm. And, and I think I have, I'm challenged with making sure that we're not assuming something that, that we don't have any truth to. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we believe life will never change. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't have that evidence. And so in, in order for us to at least survive that downturn, we have to at least appreciate that things could get better. And there are things. Mm -hmm. The other thing is taking inventory of what else do I have, and, and I'm sure you do that a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, my relationship's really bad, or I've been a, have a broken heart. But what about my friendships? What about my health? Mm -hmm. um, what about my intellect? What about my hobbies? And and understanding to take inventory of not making it all about that one thing. And I think that even though it doesn't make it all better, that allows mm -hmm. people to what I'll call survivor get through that really tough time. And I don't know if you've experienced mm -hmm. that as well. Yeah, I think, I think what you're speaking to also helps people get stable. Yes. Right? Yes. Because if you're so overwhelmed and devastated, you're not going to be able to even serve, you know, your right. breathing is the best you can expect. Right. But if you you take that inventory and you access those other parts of your life, I think it buoys you up. Right. And then I think you can probably do what you started talking about, which is grieving. Yeah, right. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you, But you're right. You have to have that stability to grieve. You have to have that wherewithal that um, mm -hmm. um, health mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to be able to be uh, grieving mm -hmm. in, a, in a good and proper yeah. way. Mm -hmm. It's tricky, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting phenomenon that I can grieve the loss of this relationship, but continuing in right. the relationship. It is fascinating that, that we can do that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, know, it's the quote it, we talked about. Um, yeah. See, I, the brain has those two sides. You get emotions and logic. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we're balanced, that enables us to be very effective. Mm -hmm. And I, that quote I got from Philip DeCourcy, emotions are like kids, don't put them in the trunk mm -hmm. and don't let them drive. Right. And, and I like to talk to my clients about that because I don't want them to lose their emotions. I, I don't think that's healthy. I don't want to stuff them in a closet. I mean, we have to, we have to experience those. Mm -hmm. But we also mm -hmm. don't want to lose the logic. Right. And mm -hmm. um, I spend a lot of time talking about you know, post-traumatic stress with my clients. So mm -hmm. if you've been driving all your life and you get hit, the next thing you know, for the next six weeks, you, six months maybe even, you can't drive. You're scared. Now, logically, you know you're as safe as you've always been. But emotionally, right. you're out of whack. Right. So at some point, you've got to get yourself to a balanced place where you understand that the emotions are based on the wreck, not based on your ability to be safe. Right. Right. And so you're trying to balance right. that. And I think when people have heartache, it looks like this. I'm very emotional, right. and I'm probably not real logical. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like my job is to bring the logic up sure. as the emotions are coming down to balance. Mm -hmm. um, and that's some of the things we work with. Sure. Yeah. So if, if someone, uh, whether a friend or a client or whatever, is coming to you saying that you know they have just experienced mm -hmm. something that you know they're talking about, a broken heart, I mean, what would be the first steps yeah. for this person? The first thing I'm making, helping them understand is that it's going to take time. I just, I, I, you know, we, there's not a quick fix to that hurt mm -hmm. right. any more than if I lost a loved mm -hmm. one. Sure. It's just, you know, I want to, one, let them know it'll pass. 
and it mm -hmm. always has. Mm -hmm. yeah. But two, I want them to be understand that it's not going to be an easy deal. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm wanting, just like we talked about, I want to make them healthy. I'm wanting to make them focused on, okay, how do I have a healthy day today? How do I mm -hmm. focus my attention one step at a time? What can I do today sure. to concentrate my thoughts in the right place? Sure. Uh, yeah. What am I eating today? Um, who am I seeing today? Mm -hmm. Who are some friends I can be around? How can I sometimes be distracted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes can I have things exercise or things that are positive? But how do I get my life about not just that? Mm -hmm. It doesn't make it go away. That emotion's still there, but mm -hmm. allows me to focus my attention on some other areas while I'm getting through the pain. And how do you help people start to mm -hmm. associate pain with something helpful or positive? I hate to use that word, but yeah. you know, suffering like Carl Jung, right? I mean, legitimate yeah. suffering, Absolutely. right? It, that, that's a function that's a guarantee in, in, for all humans. I, I've always, uh, I'm always fascinated when we talk about, I believe the mind is either going to control the emotions and the emotions can control the mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I give the example of exercise. I'm talking about this actually tomorrow at a marriage conference that if you get up in the morning, you don't feel like exercising. Okay, you can follow your feelings and your mind will go, we're in bed, sounds good to me, and your mind will just follow those emotions. Mm -hmm. But if you decide that your mind goes, bathing suit weather, your mind goes, man, I remember what I felt like last time I worked out, then your mind tells your body, hey, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But I feel a lot of times we're going to drive that train either here, mm -hmm. and I put that as emotions, emotions. and feelings, mm -hmm. or here, intellect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes our intellect can say it's just emotions. Yep. And our emotions go, Okay, we're good. And mm -hmm. with my anxiety clients, we do the same thing. Sure. I'm scared. But is this legit? Right. It, right. We, we do this with panic all the mm -hmm. time. Or we can tell ourselves, hey, we're fine. Sure. Now, I know we have injuries and our body says not to work out. We need to listen to those. Yeah. yeah. But for the most part, I believe one is leading the other. Yeah. You know, that pain is real. The question is, then, then what do I want to do with the real pain? Right. Um, yes. I think the pain we accept and go, ah, I don't like it. And, yeah. and you shouldn't. And uh, all of us experienced it. My wife, a couple months ago, was worried about my daughter and said, I just don't want her to go through any pain. I don't want oh, her to yeah. get hurt. Oh, sure. what she said, I don't want her to get hurt. She's 22. I said, she's going to. Mm -hmm. And she goes, I said, That's, we get hurt. Yeah. It, it makes for better relationships. Yeah. Yeah. You're it makes for that, stronger. Right? <laughs> no, <laughs> she's used to me by now. Um, it makes better relationships. But yeah. the reality is, if yeah. you go, haven't gone through pain, you will. Yeah. yeah, and and the only way to avoid it, and I, I was talking to a client who mm -hmm. lost a loved one. Um, we were meeting yesterday. I said I can take away the pain of a loss, just don't have any relationships. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I asked him. I said, Would you trade? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He said, No. And so we we will give into the opportunity to have pain, mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to have a relationship. Right. And I think that's the key is, well, we're hurting because we're, we're putting ourselves out there. But we're putting ourselves out there because it, there's opportunity to have something that I believe everybody wants. Right. Right. And so I want people that are going through mm -hmm. pain to go, listen, it's okay if we end up somewhere where we want to be, right? right. Mm -hmm. can, can, we, can we handle that if, if, if I can mm -hmm. tell you that down the road something good's going to happen? Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we go there? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I've had similar experiences, too, working with couples or um, a partner that has been hurt really bad. And yeah. <clears throat> And one of the common things that they say, because they get mad at themselves for being hurt. Yes. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. probably seen that I too. shouldn't right? be hurt. Right? Right. I should have saw it coming. Yeah. You know, right. yeah. Uh, they feel mean? foolish. And and then um, after processing that, they'll say something like, um, I, I know one thing, like, um, I'm never going to let that happen again. Right. I'm never going to be in a position where I'll let that happen again. Right. And then I'll look at them and say, then you'll never be married. Again, right. Or right. you'll never be in a committed relationship again. Right. Because part of and I, and I just put your quote up there that where you talked about being in a relationship is, yeah. uh, a, a law or let me put it back up there. So we, so uh, right. yeah, so <laughs> I get the quote, right. So. Um, if you deserve, I mean, if you desire a life without loss, it will take a life without relationships. So I like mm -hmm. how you said that. Mm -hmm. right. But um, that's uh, what we are doing, um, uh, or what we're trying to express to our clients too. That it's not just that this is just how relationships work. It's what is required yeah. for it to work. Like you, you cannot put yourself in a position in a relationship and, and, and it work well if you're not vulnerable yeah. to feeling fooled or right. foolish, right? Yeah. One of my favorite definitions of love when I do, I'll do pre-marriage and I do a lot of marriage work, you guys are aware of that, yeah. um, is giving uh, someone the permission or opportunity to hurt me and trusting they won't. 
Um, mm, that's, that's the goal. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's what we're exactly trying to get. Yeah. Because I'm not going to have what I believe we're supposed to have in a marriage unless I open myself up to get hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's exactly what you were saying. So I said, hey, if you can get to the point where I give my spouse the permission to hurt me, and I trust they won't, mm-hmm. yeah. that's where mm-hmm. that's what we're and I I believe what we're all searching for. Sure. Yeah. But of course, yeah. there's the risk of right. trusting that I won't get hurt. Yes. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that uh, there's another important piece to this too that I want you to talk about briefly is that um, there is a concept, I think it was uh, uh, Janice Abram Springs, um, I can't can't remember, Uh, she she wrote a book called uh, After the Affair and then she actually wrote a book about forgiveness and sometimes I I don't want people hearing this thinking that I need to be what Janice would call a a cheap forgiver. Right. So in other words that I'm so, oh well, Donnie said that, <laughs> that I should lot, be. <laughs> we'll start using that. I'm going to tell mom what Donnie said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, that, you know, Donnie said that I just need to trust you again. Mm-hmm. Right. And just throw myself right back right. into it and right back in front of a train. Well, the thing you about know, loss so. that you were saying is that we learn from that. It's not that we never go back to the well, right. but we go back to the well with more wisdom. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a guy recently whose you know girlfriend broke up with him, and we talked about okay, so what was it that you've learned from right. the person that you started dating? What didn't you know prior? What, what are you going to take right. with you? Right. And I think when we're hurt in a relationship, especially when we have to stay in, that means we mm-hmm. set boundaries. Mm-hmm. Right. Boundaries should happen. They should say, "Listen, I'm not going to open myself up to get hit again, mm-hmm. uh, right. to emotionally or physically altogether. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to make sure I'm safe. If I'm mm-hmm. staying in, if I don't learn from my hurt." Well, then I set myself up to be hurt again. Mm -hmm. And even though we're saying hurt is going to happen, that doesn't mean that I'm not learning from it. And in in many ways, protecting myself from being Mm -hmm. hurt again in the same way or in a different manner. So I'm Mm -hmm. I'm with you. We really talk about boundaries. Um, We really talk about what do we learn maybe in the next relationship if you got hurt and you're not in a relationship anymore. What are you going to learn to take forward? Because you're going to take baggage. Um, sometimes you're not going to trust very easily. Mm-hmm. Right. It's just going to be a part of it, and you're going to have to deal with that. Um, sometimes you're you're not going to expect someone to love you. I mean, there's a lot of things you're bringing to that mm-hmm. that if you don't recognize and look for, you'll take it to the next one. Um, if you're just now suffering or feeling uh, or just experienced a broken heart or you've been in it mm-hmm. for a while, and yeah. I often uh, you've experienced this probably too, where people are in it too long. Like yeah. I've told many clients, yeah. that's too long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we we need to get you well. You know, uh, reach out to somebody, uh, whether it's a minister or a mentor or a therapist, just reach out. And someone that's not going to, in my opinion, where we get in trouble sometimes when we reach out to someone that actually fuels that that loss. Um, You can get together a friend and they'll, oh yeah, it's bad, Mm -hmm. or or they're not aware of letting you know how good they have it. And and so reach out to people that are healthy, that when you leave, you feel a a new sense of strength, you feel like you can move forward, Mm -hmm. um, because we're getting stuck when we're grieving that long, we're continuing to feed Mm -hmm. uh, the same man Animal that's keeping us there and sure. and I want to encourage those that are that are struggling that you don't have to be stuck on that now there's a period of time that I believe we grieve whether it's a loss mm-hmm. of someone or heartbreak but I don't believe you have to live there mm-hmm. and I think over time doing the right things you can get to a place where um, you at least are in a new normal mm-hmm. which right. I think is better said than the because you're not normal because it's, you've lost something but it's a new normal right, right. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we really appreciate you yeah. being you. here today. Now we're, we're entering um, our uh, Fast Five round. You ready to do this? I'm ready. All right. So this is Fast Five with Donnie Van Curen here. So we'll start uh, with, our, with question number one, which mm-hmm. I'm putting here on the screen. Um, so pick uh, name somebody, uh, dead or alive, that you haven't ever met that you would love to have dinner with or have had dinner with, and then tell us why. <laughs> wow, that's a dead or alive. You just like yeah, put the open yeah, the yeah, whole dead thing or alive. Man. Man. You know, as, as a you know, it's not it's not going to happen. So uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, can, you, can play. you know, um, just because I'm I'm a I'm a strong Christian man that has has really committed to ter- trying to figure out what why God created me. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. I'd have to, to, you know, maybe a textbook answer, but say Jesus. I, I just, oh, yeah. there's just, there's so much I would like to ask 
to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. so much I want to know well, why this and why that and yeah. what really happened there yeah. and you know, what didn't you tell yeah. us here. And so I think I would be intrigued to sit down and, and yeah. know that all my questions could get yeah. answered. Yeah. Gives you some appreciation for Thomas. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you do yeah. so much? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, what word is just fun to say? What word is mm-hmm. fun to say? Because we talk all day, right? So yes. Words yes. Can, can um, man, I'm probably going to date myself again if I say <laughs> that. Um, I, I just always feel like it's cool to say chill. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. I, I just always yeah. thought chill yeah. was a good word. And even today, I kind of like chill. It is. Well, yeah. it's a good therapist word. It's a good, it's a good no, therapist I was word. thinking about that's great. Yeah. If I just told my class, oh. chill. chill. Yeah. I, I'm not sure that would work, but we could give yeah. it a you shot. You could try it, right? Give so it a we, shot. we ask people this question in every, every show we do. So if people are watching this, you know, if you happen to be on here someday, just go watch the old ones. You'll know what questions we're going to ask you. But I do think you're the first person to have that word. It was definitely the first person to have that word, but the first person to have a single syllable. (laughs) Wow. Wow. There you go. I I think so. Yeah. I'm easy that way. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You're just, well, you're pretty chill. That's exactly. I I hope so. so. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next question is, um, what's the last show you binge watched? Oh wow! Last show I binge watched, so it, it you can define binge for yourself. Yeah, you know? well, there's probably only one show that me and my wife will watch repeatedly when it comes around, but that's usually because it's it, we're not going to Netflix. The last show we probably the only show we binge watched on Netflix was um, um, oh wow I just lost it. it's uh, uh, the serial killer. Um, uh, Dexter. 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 Okay. Yeah. And that's the only thing, I mean, we don't watch a lot of TV. That's the only thing we binge watch. And then when um, two shows, Amazing Race and um, uh, Master Chef, when they come on, oh, yeah. we, send to, we tend to watch every episode and yeah. have someone we're cheering for. And uh-huh. So those are, those are probably as, yeah. as, as deep as I get into that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. I'm showing my age again, by the way. No. Dexter and... Well, well, I just don't binge watch it, so yeah, no, I don't watch TV. No, my, my daughter Netflix. binge watches Friends and uh, yeah. a couple other things. So. Yeah. I could never figure out how to work that Netflix, so I just didn't yeah, get it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. How do you, work, how do you work that thing? Watch TV. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, what song is currently uh, are you hooked on? Or band. Or, okay. Song or band? Oh, that's probably a good question because I, I go across the board. It depends on mood. It depends on what I'm doing. Um, but my um, my sister-in-law got me um, enjoying Johnny Swim. And it's a very uh, kind of laid back. I don't think they're really country. It's a husband and wife group that I didn't know about. And, and so it's kind of nice music to play through the house when you're doing some things. It's, yeah. it's very easy listening. Um, they they tour with um, who do they tour with um, they tour with a group around but Johnny Swim I think it's a Texas group but yeah. that's probably the one that, that is jumping out more often right, yeah. Right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you if you are watching this and you've heard of Johnny Swim please <laughs> comment comment on that so Johnny doesn't feel, feel like the only that's guy. right I'm the only guy <laughs> so, Maybe Johnny I'm swim, ahead of the, maybe I'm ahead of the curve in that situation. Yeah, yeah see, you may be setting a trend. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if that you became be like cool. super famous like because huge people were watching this? First time ever like, heard of it. No, yeah, there's so a lot chill. of there's yeah. a lot of people out there that I think I've heard of them. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Last one. Final question. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, this might be the wrong question to ask you based upon our conversation here. Uh-huh. Just a minute. Uh, what is your favorite podcast to listen to? <laughs> the no, I, I was like, I kind of like had to find a podcast for um, you. Well, I, I can't say this one, yeah, because this isn't a podcast. Yeah. So, um, I, I I don't listen to podcasts. Okay. Um, I I got into a habit of not listening to stuff. Um, uh, when I trained, I used to train for triathlons, and I used to listen to music, and a lot of the guys would listen to podcasts, but then I got to where mm-hmm. I wasn't listening to anything. So um, generally, the only time I'm listening to something um, is probably the radio on my way to work. Mm-hmm. And then I'm usually, I do a lot more reading. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't listen to books. I read, okay. I'm not, and it's got to be, it, it can't yeah. be on a nook or anything. It's got to be right. the paper stuff. Right. And so I generally am reading, and then at, at home I'm listening to music. Yeah. So, do, you, do you like getting a... The ink from the newspaper on your 
You know, I don't do I don't do any newspapers. Oh, you think I would? You meant like a book? Book? Yeah, like I love the hardback books. Mm -hmm. Paperback kind of bothers me, but like when I'm traveling, my wife laughs because she'll have a her iPad and she'll have like 20 books, and I'll have five or ten stuffed in my bag. You know, I'm still hurting my back trying to carry my books, but I just I I like to to read and mark and stuff like that. So, do does it bother you if she or if someone bends the spines? Oh, with the books? Yeah. No, not really. Oh, okay. um, what bothers me is I have a lot of books that um, yeah. the authors um, have signed them. Oh, and oh, yeah. I generally will find myself loaning them to a client. Uh -huh. That's a, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I don't know where they are. So yeah. I started to go, okay, which ones are signed? I don't want right. that person to. I yeah. need to order five or six. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right. Uh -huh. right. Well, I'll just say this. When you listen to your first podcast, let us know yeah. what you like. I will do that. Yeah. As soon as I... I have yeah. several that have been recommended to me. Okay. I mean, yeah. I literally have had several. Yeah. And I tell myself I've got to, to listen to some. Yeah. I've got to get on to some. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of them that, that are mm -hmm. phenomenal from because I'm yeah. getting information from them, yes. right. um, either through uh, print mm -hmm. or through someone telling them. So uh, there's a lot out there, but yeah. I just uh, I need to get into yeah. the habit. Okay. Yeah. I will you, let you know. Okay. Do you know uh, Mary Lou Tabers? Mm -hmm. She's a therapist here in town. Anyway, she's she's watching okay. right now because we're live. <laughs> but maybe she can. Maybe Mary Lou can throw out some podcasts too. So if uh, if you're watching this, give Donnie some podcast ideas. I, hey, so can you change, bring as many. We can bring yeah, him into the right. 21st century. I promise to at least find one yeah. or two and and give him a shot. Right. <laughs> So you know, I probably should we probably should have went with the question about with the word choice first because like every answer was just like a chill. Chill answer. Answer like, yeah. gee, you talk to Jesus. Like, cause Jesus is pretty. Well, chill, I had to kind of slow down because you said don't answer quick, and I was like, if you would have told me that, the speed run, I would have had to. Okay, I'm on the clock. Yeah, I, yeah. I was afraid there was a buzzer. Oh, oh no, there's no buzzer. No okay, buzzer. No. just making sure. No. <laughs> but Johnny, even his name, John, Johnny Swim. Yeah. That even sounds pretty mellow to me, but. Yeah, give it a shot. Like I said, I, I was told yeah. about it, and my sister-in-law lives in Texas, and I was like. They were wearing the shirts. They were going to concerts. Oh. Right. I mean, like big time. And I was thinking, you know, what is this? And then when I listened to it, it you know, it, it it's it's nice. It's catchy. Cool. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's nice to say yeah. that you follow someone that no one knows. Yeah. You know, if you said like Journey, I'm dating myself again. <laughs> um, if you said it, everybody's like, I know that. But if you say something when someone doesn't sure. know, they're thinking, man, he's deep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we really appreciate you you being here with us doing this it's really it's awesome yeah. you gotta again check Donnie out go to his website um, we won't we are we usually try to do these every couple weeks mm -hmm. but uh, we won't be back for a few weeks right. um, for uh, usually we do every two weeks but we're gonna do three weeks so mm -hmm. hang with us we got um, uh, Matt Stevenson lined up uh, Matt is going to talk about well when divorce uh, is on the table mm -hmm. um, something that happens a lot in relationships and, and that's a scary topic but it needs to be discussed and that's his specialty he's a certified discernment counselor and a, and a marriage family therapist um, so we're excited to have him on the show and uh, we hope everybody will consider joining us for that so thanks for watching Well, 1820 is my company that I started when I started counseling. This is my second career. So I um, mentioned earlier, I worked at Loves and uh, then left Loves to start um, a practice in 2000, and I guess about 11 when I got my license in. Um, wanted a name, uh, I really was focused on uh, the Christian aspect of counseling. And so mm -hmm. Matthew 1820 uh, okay. has a significance and that's what those, uh, those numbers are for. And then actually when we started New Path uh, with my partner, Cynthia Shioko, uh, Dr. Cynthia and Marty Loberg. Uh, it is also a Christian-based group, and so the 12-2 is Romans 12-2. Taking time out of your day to, to come be part of our really awesome studio. I, I, for those of you who can't see the studio, we'll post some pictures, but I really think the news stations I, we're hey, setting the bar high. That's this why is, I this feel is like, probably. Uh, this so, is impressive. Yeah. I, I, hey, like this is my first podcast, so I'm yeah. I'm impressed. Well, no, it's been so a you're, thrill. You're you're dating yourself here. This isn't a podcast. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> this is Facebook Live. Okay, now yeah, the podcast Live, is uh, yeah. you're listening. This is also audio. my first Facebook Live. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> so, okay, good.